the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God did not just command Adam and Eve not to eat the fruit. Contrary to what so many of us would think. Their sin did not begin with eating the fruit. God specifically said, you shall not eat the fruit and you shall not touch it. So the eating is the second sin. The touching is the first sin. The word touch in this verse of scripture is from the original Hebrew word naga. Naga means a whole lot of things. Once I explain the meaning of naga to you, you will be able to understand that touches are not simple. Touches are not common. They are not basic. The word naga in the original Hebrew could mean to touch something physically. It could also mean to lay your hand upon something for any purpose. It could also mean to lie with a woman. When a man lays with a woman, he has touched the woman. It could also mean, by implication, to reach for something. It could mean to acquire something, to strike something violently. To punish, to defeat, to destroy, to beat, to be able to bring down, to cast down, to come nigh to, to draw near to something, to make something happen, to join yourself with something, for something to be plagued, for a plague to reach something, to smite or strike someone or something, to reach out or extend or to be stricken by something. So when you look at all those definitions, then you easily understand that when you are being touched, it's not as simple as something rubbing on the surface of your skin. God said to Adam and Eve, he said, you shall not touch the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, and neither shall you eat of it. Now listen to me carefully. It is impossible for you to eat something that you have not touched. Anything you eat, you have touched. That's why God told Adam and Eve, do not touch it. Because if you don't touch it, you will not eat it. There are too many Christians who have put themselves in the trap of touching things that they should not touch. And that's why they are eating things that they should not eat. I'm going to say that again. A lot of us have put ourselves in the trap of touching things that we shouldn't be touching. And that's why we are eating things that we should not be eating. Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm glad you asked. By now, you already understand that a touch is not only physical. It can come in different forms. Whenever you know that there is something you should not eat, something you should not have in your life, something you should not accept into your life, avoid touching that thing. Somebody says, Pastor, we still don't understand. I would explain. If David did not want to touch or sleep with Bathsheba, he would not have touched Bathsheba with his eyes from his own rooftop. The moment David started touching things he should not touch, he lost his place in covenant with God. David was set up, inclined, chosen and prepared to build a temple for God. But the day he touched Bathsheba was the end of that great commission. There are places God wants to take you. 
But what you touch will determine whether you get there. The moment Solomon started touching strange women, Solomon lost his place in God. The day Gehazi touched the forbidden gift, that was the day leprosy came upon his family. The day Achan touched what he should not have touched, what God said not to touch, that was the day destruction came upon him and his family. There are things that you touch that will not only affect you, they will affect you, your child, your wife, your family, your generation, and the generations that come after you, unto the fourth generation.